So welcome back everyone. Today we're going to find out, is there a difference between a USA made Crescent Wrench at $35, a Chinese made Crescent Wrench at $5? So thanks for joining me. I think this is going to be a very interesting test and something that I have wondered for a long time. So Crescent Wrench, man, talk about a staple uh, in any man's toolbox. I mean, a must have tool. Every time you break out a Crescent Wrench in a video, there's always gonna be someone, maybe, I don't know what we call them, elitists, that say you should never use a Crescent Wrench. Anyone who says that doesn't know what they're talking about. If, yes, of course, it's better to use a box-in wrench or a wrench that fits the nut, but the reality of it is, is if you're down in the field or you're packing tools to remote location or you have, want to have something in your truck that just does about everything and you don't want to pack 300 pounds of tool or tools around, a crescent wrench is actually a very interesting, a really, really a great choice and a must-have. One interesting fact that I just learned about these, the first crescent wrench was invented in right around 1917 by the Crescent Company. Of course, it's still by most of, you know, by most of us is referred to that to this day, even though it's a, an adjustable wrench and the Crescent was the brand name. Of course, the patent ran out years ago and there's a million different companies making them. Uh, another interesting fact, remember Charles Lindbergh, the first guy who flew across the, the Atlantic in an airplane? He took only a very few things with him because weight was so important. He took gas, water, a sandwich, a pair of pliers, and a crescent wrench. So <laughs> to give you an idea when he had to make hard choices on what tool to take, that's what he took. So we are going to test these to failure using, the, I will break the, my ultimate <laughs> cheater bar uh, that I have used to break a lot of tools is nothing more than a cutoff drive shaft from a, a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, but man, it has made a very good cheater bar and it has broken a lot of tools. So we'll see which one's going to be tougher and can we adjust, can, can we justify the cost difference? Let's talk about that a little bit and come up and look at the fit and finish of these. I was absolutely staggered at the price difference between, well, this was actually really hard to find. This is an S&K 8-inch USA made crescent wrench. This was one of the only USA built crescent wrenches that I could find and it was expensive. I mean, when you figure, I guess expensive, that's all relative. We have all been accustomed to such values and, and inexpensive or cheap prices on, on these overseas tools that when we see an American made tool, sometimes I mean, the sticker shock, uh, for me anyway, is um, you know, it's pretty tremendous. But so here we had it, I found it, an eight inch crescent wrench on Amazon was $35, plus, that included shipping. Versus, you won't believe this, the cheapest one I could find, overseas produced, it's industrial though, this one doesn't say industrial. It was a three pack, $4.97. It was so cheap that it had to be an add-on item. I had to order something else to get it. I couldn't believe it. How can you produce a tool where you get three of them, a six, an eight, and a 10 for $4.95? I mean, I like to, I try to buy American whenever possible, but man, oh man, I mean, they don't make it easy for us sometimes, but we also, well, that's a whole nother video in itself. So let's take a look at the fit and finish here. So they're both eight inch crescent wrenches. If we open them to their extreme length here, I would imagine they're gonna be comparable. It's gonna be just over an inch. And of course they're exactly the same. We can see though that the S and K USA produced is, has, is more robust. It's a little bit thicker. It's definitely got a lot nicer coating on it. Rattle test. Hear that? They both rattle. But when we look close to these, we'll see that just the feel of it, you know, when you get a little grease and dirt in there, you're working outside, uh, those little things are the difference between being able to open it with one hand and not. I found some of these bind a little bit, but it's still a functional wrench. You know, it still works. It's just the tolerances are not as nice. The finishes are not as nice the robustness of the screw look at that i didn't even notice that big heavy robust screw on this one kind of a cheaper smaller screw on that this has an anti what is this oxy what do they call that black stuff kind of an anti-rust it just you know it does give you the fizz when you hold it i mean when i grab one of these american made and i have a couple of these I'm like ooh. That is a nice wrench. That has a good feel to it. It just has that thing that's hard to put into words where these, uh, not so much, but $35 and well, I don't know when you, $2, $1.75. Uh, goodness, I mean, that is, uh, 
that's a huge difference. Another thing we're going to look for is how well do the surface made, surfaces made up here when we close it? Can we see sunshine or light between the jaws as they come together? And no, they actually I can't feel any visible deviations there. It's actually pretty good. And of course, let's see here, same. Tighten that up there. Nicely finished. Side to side movement a little bit right there. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's 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 a huge gulf between the prices here. And for a guy putting together a budget toolkit, is it wise to spend $35 on a crescent wrench when you can have, when there's other things you need? Uh, you're going to have to decide on that. But let's take it over to the vise and see. I've got a couple tests set up that's going to really push these probably to failure. So the foundation of our test is ye old snappy tom vise mounted on a fully welded steel bench bolted to the timbers. This is a formidable clamping system right here. I've yet to, even the, I will break the, can't even move this whole system. All right, so what I've got here is I've got a piece of probably half inch flat bar here. And the first thing that I want to do is to test these things kind of torsionally like this. You know, these tools are not designed to work this way, but all of us, again, you know, anyone who says that they don't find themselves in these situations like this is a liar or a fraud or an elitist because you do what you have to do. Sometimes you can't get a crescent wrench in there, and I have on many accounts put it over a bolt like this and use that with a cheater bar to do what I had to do. So let's see how much flex we get and kind of what happens. We're not going to push them to breaking strength, but we're going to put, some, put the wood to them. So we won't be using I will break thee on there. We'll use this brother, I will bend thee. And that's the nice thing about the hole in the end there. Not only is it good for a pegboard, but it's good for a pry bar like this if you need to get something in a tight area. So we're not gonna go too far, but let's put some serious pressure on it and see what do we have there. We have the handle flexing. If I were to continue to push it, could I break it? It's definitely gonna break at the handle. I can feel that. I've got a lot of deflection right in there but I don't think that anything's going right there. The weak point, I would imagine, is gonna twist off and break right, right there. A lot of flex, really, really springy. Now, if we take the $35 S&K, X&K makes great tools. They, they're, you know, they're really kind of bridge the gap between Snap-on and the cheaper tools. My granddad, he was an economical guy, being an Oki living through the Depression, and they were always really popular with him. He, he just found it to be a, a good mix of value and quality with a great warranty. All right, so on the S&K, this is not a sponsored endorsement, by the way. These are all paid for by me. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna do the same thing, put some pressure on it, and we have basically the same thing. The joffs feel really good. I think if, just judging from experience, if I were to push this, it's going to break probably in the same spot, but very strong. I don't think you have to worry about the jaws. I'd say both of those pass Chalked up in the vise here, we've got a nice five-sided, heavy, very hard steel snap-on punch. Now this will represent a bolt very well, and this is the biggest complaint you get from guys about the crescent wrench is they round bolts off. And yes, they do have a tendency to do that, but a lot of that is because of user error, not using the tool correctly. Now, a crescent wrench is designed to be used one way, and that is this configuration clockwise. When you think about it, when you, when you come in, you tighten it back and forth until you take all the play out of it, and you don't use the end of the jaws here. You don't come out here to the tip. That puts a lot of stress on it, and you can already see it starting to flex and open up. You come as deep as you can. Not always an option, but whenever you can, come deep as you can, and you turn it this way. By using the tool clockwise in this configuration, you're putting the stresses on the back, the meatier part of the tool. As I'm turning right here, I'm pushing on the strongest part of the tool, versus here. Now, if I go this way, if I'm going counterclockwise, what it's doing is it's putting a lot of the pressure and strain on the smallest part of the tool, which is down inside in the adjustable mechanism. So come in, the proper way to do it is come in, tighten it, make sure you take the play out of it, and then you seat it as deep as you can and you're ready to go. Now we're ready for I will break thee. All right, so we'll put this on here. And what we're gonna be looking for is how the tool reacts under all of this load, and I'm just gonna have to gauge it by, by my think so and by my feel on which one seems to wanna hold the best before it slips off. Here we go. Now, because we're using a hardened steel punch, it's probably not going to mar. It's going to be the wrench that's going to mar, but I'm gonna start pulling on this, and we can see I'm putting very moderate pressure, not very heavy. 
will the wrench be strong enough to hold as it goes over the ridge of that? Now I'm putting quite a bit more pressure on it, probably 60 pounds if I were to guess, and it's breaking over. All right, so did it break? Oh, it didn't do it any good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Let's take a closer look here. Our test may be coming to a rapid conclusion right here. Okay, so a good wrench should be able to handle that without completely failing, but that something didn't, it's not working anymore. Something skipped or broke inside. Sometimes, I've ran into this before, you can take a brass hammer, you can give it a little bit of, a little bit of jarring, get things lined up again, and get it to, get it to go again. Same thing, we'll come in, Tighten, take the play out of it right there. Definitely a, certainly a superior tool. Will it survive the test here? Does it hold tighter? I'm gonna have to just kind of go off feel there, but so I'll start to pull here. Definitely getting harder. It's certainly, it's, yeah, I'm pulling harder than I did with the other one. It's holding the edge better. Actually, it's really hard. Really pulling hard now, probably over, well over 100 pounds. Oh, oh goodness. Something gave, oh, something gave. What gave, did something break? Well, still working. Well, we need to go the whole way there. I thought that something broke inside. It didn't sound good though, did it? We need to go the whole way like we did with the, with the Chinese wrench. All right, let's try that one more time. A lot of pressure on that. Oh. oh, goodness, look at that. Did that turn it in the vise? Surely not. Did that turn? I had that thing clamped down as tight as I could get it. Wow, that's been pretty impressive. I was not expecting that. I'll have to go back and look at that footage, but I think it twisted it inside of the vise. That's one of the first tools I will break that he wasn't able to break. Okay, so I think we exerted, I exerted a lot more force on it than I did with the Chinese one. And feeling here a whole lot less. I can feel a little bit of, little bit of maybe something. No, it's not, not really. That's actually, it was a much better steel uh, than, the, than the other one. I don't feel, it's not really dented or deformed. Actually, I think it's, it doesn't deformed at all. I think it just feel a little few tool marks in there, but that's impressive. That's a very, very tough wrench. We've got to see this through. Uh, we, I told you we'll test these to failure. We got to test them to failure. I, I hate to tear up good tools, but we'll, we'll find out for future generations here. So with a, a, a little bit of smashing and, and manipulating, I have got the Chinese wrench uh, to work again. So let's test these to failure and to see what breaks, what gives first. I think I'll put some safety glasses on for this one. Okay, so we have a big piece of, what is that half inch steel bar on there? That's not going anywhere. We'll really cinch it up here. We'll put the, I will break the on there and we'll find out what indeed will break, starting with the Chinese industrial strength. Okay, here we go. Ooh, it's a lot of pressure. I had to put my safety glasses on for this one. Oh, something gave. I didn't, wasn't pushing that hard on it actually. I, I don't know if we're gonna come back. Uh-oh, pieces are falling out. That's, that's not good. What gave? Still working though. Ah, let's do it again. It's, uh-oh. Yeah, it's something, it's definitely not as, oh, it's not tightening. Oh, it's had it. It's had it. There's no, there's no more using this wrench. Won't tighten. So a gear broke off inside something on here. I saw a piece fall off on the floor. Oh man. Okay. Oh, this is, this is, this is just unnatural here to break a nice tool like this, but, um, We'll find out. So I, I wasn't pushing on that super hard. Make sure we're tight with the, I will break the, but we'll see how much harder I have to push on this one. All right, here we go. What's gonna happen? It's gonna break. 
if I can break. Okay, this is hard, pull as hard as I can. Slipping off a little bit. I'm putting a tremendous amount of force on this. I'm gonna have to come out here a little bit there. Oh, there it goes, something gave. Boy, that was all that I had. That was all she wrote for, yep. The I will break the, it broke. There we go, that's what happened. Just broke clean right there at the jaw, but it was all that I had. I mean, really was everything that I had flexing it on the end of that bar uh, to get that to break. It was, it was really, it was a lot stronger. No, no question about that. Man, that's sad, that is sad. So what did we learn in this test? Well, we learned that the American-made SK wrench is far superior uh, than, than the Chinese-made wrench. But, we, you know, we come down to the age-old question, that, that, that debate that goes back and forth. Is it better to buy several cheap tools than it is to buy one quality tool? And that argument rages on and will always rage on for years. I can just tell you what my experience is. There's several reasons to buy a quality tool. Um, and that is ultimately, in the long run, I know it's hard to, to figure, to justify it, but in the long run, it's going to save you money. Not, I'm not even talking about all of the, how it's going to make your work easier and, and, and how much more you're going to enjoy it, uh, but we'll talk about that too. But it, it's going to save you money because what you'll end up doing is you don't cherish these tools. When you can buy three of them for $4.97 on Amazon, they are nothing to you. They don't mean anything to you. And what tends to happen for most guys is that you, you don't look after them. Uh, you, you, you've got them laying here, you've got them laying there, and you buy and buy and buy. And before you know it, when your children are gathering up all of your things and selling them in an estate sale, you've got 42 8-inch crescent wrenches. And that's just what happens. You, you, and you ultimately end up paying more in the long run. When you pay, the reason why houses that are owned are treated better and look better and better looked after is because they, they are precious to the, to, the, to the homeowner versus someone who's renting. We all know that. Same thing comes into effect when we're talking about these tools. When you pay $35, $30 for an 8-inch USA-made crescent wrench, you're going to cherish it. You're going to look after it. And, and you're probably, if you're somewhat responsible, you're going to have it your entire life and you're never going to have to buy another one. It comes with a good warranty, you know, all of that being said. That in itself, you know, it, that's how it justifies it. Same way with boots. Yeah, that's why I'm a big proponent of buying custom-made boots. If you're not in your bed, you're in your boots. So you need to spend your money on two things, your bed or your boots. And so over the period of time, if you've got a boot that can last 20 years, 15 years, because it can be rebuilt, it's ultimately cheaper than buying cheap Walmart boots and that just tear up your feet and hurt your back and break down. You know, so it's about pay me now or pay me later and all of that. There's also just the psychological, just the enjoyment that comes from a quality tool. When I grab a snap-on wrench, when I grab a snap-on screwdriver, impact driver, there is a feeling that comes, it's hard to justify, or hard, it's hard to explain, but it just, I like it. It, make, it makes me feel good. I know I've got a quality tool in my hand, and it's enjoyable. And, and you know, life is miserable in, in many aspects, and there's a lot, we all have a lot of trouble and heartache, and wherever we can find joy, and, and even if it's in simple things like tools or, or things that, that make us happy, that are proud of, that we enjoy and we look after, you know, that to me, that has a value too that shouldn't be discounted. And the final thing is that is uh, letting you down in the wrong time. Let you know many exa examples I could give of where quality tools made the difference. It saved the day. You may be up underneath of a of a car and you've got one chance to get that bolt off the bell housing, and it's in the tight tight to get tight to get hard to get area. And because you have a good wrench, it was able to fit on there and hold on there, and it broke loose, and you got it out and didn't strip it out versus maybe you have a cheap wrench where you're under there in the same situation and it was just not quite good enough and it rounded and stripped the bolt off. Now you've got to pull, who knows what you have to do because you, that was your one chance and you lost it. What if you're in a remote location and you break down elk hunting or fishing or deer hunting and there's no one around camping and that wrench, that crummy wrench that you bought, you needed it, it had to, it had to work, it had to function, uh, it, it let you down and, you, and it failed and it, was, it turned into be a big, a big issue. So there's many reasons and, and it's, you know, uh, there's many varying levels of tools. So, you know, I can't tell you, you know, this is the one to get or this is the one not to get. It's just you have to kind of think about when you're making those purchases. 
what, what do I need and, and what do I have to spend? And, and, and to me, it's easy for me to say, you know, because I have a good set of tools and, and I'm in a position in my life now where, uh, where I, I have financially, I'm able to buy the things that I want and need, but it wasn't always that case. And there was many, many a time when I was younger going into a tool, tool store where I, I had to pain and make that painful decision. I've got the good one in my hand and I've got the, the budget one in my hand and I, it's tough. It's tough. I, I don't have the answer for you, uh, but just some things to think about. But that was kind of a fun test and um, I'm really impressed with the, with the S&K. That was a great, great wrench one that I would really, really trust. So I'll put the links to these tools in the description and uh, tell me what tools you'd like to see tested next. We'll test, we can test some things to failure and maybe, you know, the good versus the bad, but let me know, know in the comments what you'd like to see and I can get those coming, but uh, I kind of enjoy this to kind of see what's what. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.